Newspapers, magazines, radio, and television all play an important role in shaping how the world understands the LGBTQ community. There are no clear statistics about how many American journalists identify as LGBTQ, but the newly created professional organization, Trans Journalism Association, says about 400 of its members are transgender. This week, CBSN's Pride Month coverage is focused on diversity and representation. Gina Twa is a executive editor at Reuters. She also came out as transgender in 2020. Twa could be the most senior transgender journalist in the country. Reuters has charged her with leading new technology initiatives to help the company find new audiences. She's already playing a major role in shaping how the organization covers LGBTQ stories. And Gina joins me now. Gina, welcome. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. So, Gina, transgender topics have been in the news a lot lately, including a spike in the number of anti-trans bills in Republican-led state legislatures. How does your identity as a trans woman and your role as an executive editor shape how your organization covers these issues? Well, it's, um, it's a careful path to walk, right? Because clearly you don't want your own individual views of anything to color it. What, what you really want is you want people to come to such coverage with an open mind and to go beyond the he said, she said part of it, to, to go beyond the assertions on one side or the other side and examine the truth of it. So if, if one side says, you know, we need a law because X, um, it's not enough, I think, to just say, well, they want it because of X and the other side says that's not true. I think what's really important is for, for reporters to dig in and say, well, is X, I mean, how much of X is true? How much of any of these things make sense in context? And I think that that's a really important part of how we like to cover the world. And, and I think that's how everybody should be covering these issues, not, not just LGBT issues, but all issues, right? The world isn't made up simply right. of opposing sides. The world's made up of a lot of truth in between that too. Right. So diving into the truth of viewpoints. That's great. So, you know, you came out as a as transgender during the height of the pandemic. Can you tell us more about the role the pandemic played in you deciding to share your story? Sure. And look, I mean, I don't want to to underplay, you know, sort of the horrific tragedy that the, the pandemic was. But but for some of us, me in particular, it was a it was a great opportunity to just grow into this skin. When, when you're on meetings every day and this is how much anybody sees of you, you know, you get a real chance to, to just learn more about yourself. And so once I came out late last year, you know, I got a chance to sort of ease into my role nicely. And then um, with this new title, this new elevation, um, you know, I just, it just seemed right at that point to be more public. I, my, when I transitioned, I got so many emails and so many uh, calls from people, some strangers, some friends, who sort of said, look, uh, you know, I'm on the same journey. Um, my child is trans. Uh, I know someone else who is. It really told me the importance of visibility. Um, and so I thought, you know, it's right to be visible. So here I am. And you grew up in Singapore and worked in Asia for years. Did you experience any intersectional challenges coming out as transgender in the Asian community? I mean, so far, no. I mean, it's sort of interesting because, you know, I don't, I don't think of it as challenges. I think of it as, you know, opportunities and experience, right? We're all the sum of our parts. And so, yes, I'm Asian, I'm an immigrant, I am trans. Um, you know, there, there's so many things we all are. And I think the whole trick of, of all of this is to just sort of, you know, make sure that we're not only those things and people don't see us only as those things. Um, and, and also not to mistake our own experiences for universal experiences. We all just need to, I mean, it sounds trite, but we all need to just work harder at understanding each other and understanding all the different perspectives that we can bring to, to bear. And what advice would you have for other LGBTQ journalists who are perhaps struggling to come out at work? I mean, my heart goes out to them. And, and obviously, you know, mileage may vary. Everybody's in a very different situation. I think, you know, and, and one of the things that has happened since my coming out is getting in touch with far more LGBT professionals, journalists and others. 
And one thing we all agree on is that the world has changed dramatically. Um, and so, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, I think things would have been very different. It's not to say there isn't still discrimination, there isn't still fear of losing your job, but things are so much better. And that, you know, so what I would say to, to you know, uh, people who are thinking about coming out or, or struggling with that is to say, it's not so bad, the water's fine, come on in. Um, be careful when you do it. Spend a lot of time thinking about it. You don't want to make a mistake. You have to understand who you really are and what you really want. But once you know, don't waste time. Because, you know, the world, <clears throat> life is too short to spend time being somebody else. You should, you should seize what you, what you are, who you are, once you know it. I love that. Life is too short. Well, Gina Chua, executive editor at Reuters, thank you so much for joining us uh, with all of your copious insight. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. CBSN will mark Pride Month with four weeks of coverage. Topics include the politics of pride, diversity, representation, families, education, and health. You can watch all month long right here on CBSN.